How's it going everyone? It's Corwin with AK Studios and today we're talking about the minimum speaker cabinet. Here's the concept in CAD before we made it real. Uh, this was a really cool concept design for us and I can talk a lot about the features and details that it has in further detail. Uh, if you want to know more about it, just reach out. But today's video is going to focus mainly on the build process and how the final product came out. So starting this project out, we're just cutting down a ton of plywood. It's all 3 quarters inch birch finish ply. We had all our drawings printed out from our CAD, which makes it a lot easier to break all this lumber down to size. And then the next step was to laser cut a bunch of templates and supports for the project. Laser cutting templates is a really nice way of getting an exact design made without using a CNC. Uh, and you can also reuse these templates over and over. So you'll see I'm starting to just create rough guidelines with the templates of where I need to remove material and where I need to cut parts out of. And what I'll do is I'll take the bandsaw and remove material leaving a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch of wood outside of that line. And I'll do that on all the parts and components that I need to fit together. Once I get the rough cuts done, I'll reattach all those laser cut templates and I'll use a flush cut router to make them exact. This part of the build process is really fun. Once you get the parts flush cut to those templates, things start fitting together really well and parts start looking really seamless. Here you can see the part before it's been trimmed flush and all that extra material outside of the template. And now you can see after the part's been trimmed, the tolerances are really nice and parts fit together great. And here's a quick rundown of me building the main cabinet. I'm installing some supports for shelving and I put this whole cabinet together with uh, Craig pocket screws which allowed me to hide my fasteners so that you can't see anything from the outside. And then I glued and used finished nails to shoot everything together to give it some added stability and strength. And I'm using a pass load finish nailer which I really recommend. I've had that uh, finish nailer for a few years now and it's been really great. I'm just wrapping up the rest of this cabinet. This came together pretty quickly. Uh, I used a little bondo before I painted this whole cabinet gray. Uh, some parts that are missing from this clip are some serious magnets I installed in the bottom to hold up those speaker units. Now we're on to building the actual speaker cabinets. Uh, this is a kit that came from Parts Express. Uh, it cost $100, worth every penny though. Uh, the components are really high quality and it was really easy to put together for someone who's never built speakers like this. It was nice to be able to prototype with high quality parts. Uh, I'll have to give a shout out to Bill Bancroft and you can check out his channel in the description. He's a fantastic woodworker and he's built a lot of these kits and gave me a bunch of tips in putting this together. Now you can see those ribs that I put in there are for strength especially building a speaker box so shallow uh, you need to make sure everything's rigid. Now these are the side speaker units which have this big radius that I created by gluing some strips of plywood together and then rough cutting the radius with a bandsaw. So here I'm just gluing and shooting in this top piece before I get to sanding that radius down to what I need it to be. Uh, I chose stacking and gluing the wood together like this because it gave me a lot of rigidity with the final part. I could have done ribs and wrapped something around it or kerfed the plywood and glued that all together. Uh, but this worked out really well. Even though it was labor intensive, I was happy with the results in the end. And I had a laser cut template that I would use as a reference and keep checking uh, myself to make sure I've removed enough material to get the radius that I wanted. 
here you can see the actual speaker inside of the speaker cabinet and I'm just temporarily hot gluing in some ribs for the fabric. I use some construction adhesive later on to really secure those into place. So for those of you who've never worked with speaker fabric, it's important to note that it stretches in one direction more than another. So you kind of want to coordinate that with how you're wrapping it around your object. For the top and the front doors, I use this reclaimed siding. And once I pulled the paint off with the surface planer, it revealed this really beautiful butcher block cedar. Now I was very careful in laying everything out and marking my cuts. I didn't have a lot of this material to spare, uh, so I wanted to make sure I didn't make any mistakes and had enough wood to cover the project. Here I am just cutting the doors and the top to length before I start joining them together with the biscuit joiner here. And all I put this together with was a few biscuits and some glue. Then I used an orbital sander working my way up to 400 grip paper. Uh, then I used a tack cloth to pull all the dust off the planks and I finished everything off with some teak oil and that had some poly in it to give it a nice protected finish. And all I had left to do to bring Minim from concept to reality was put all the parts together. As always, we'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on our other social media to see what we're up to. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks.